I wasn't even planning on recording today, but I just went to something so special that it made me get up off my couch, go to the studio, turn on the lights, turn on the mic, turn on the webcam, and start recording. Colorado shocked TCU 45-42, to the first game of the Deion Sanders era. Right now, we are on the Pick Aside channel. The Joel Moran Show logo is on the top right, and that's because Pick Aside is becoming a network. Dells and Drew are launching their fantasy football show called the Fantasy Reaction Show. It will be two episodes weekly, and the Joel Moran Show will also be on the Pick Aside channel, and that will be three episodes weekly. Two of the episodes will be after Monday Night Football and Thursday Night Football, and they will be live. And then the third episode will be with a reoccurring guest, John Tortorelli. You guys love John, and I love John too. Whenever we have John in the podcast, you guys want us to add a fifth seat at the table. And I agree with you guys because John is talented. He does so much work for Pick Aside behind the scenes. He's so knowledgeable about sports, and he deserves to be recognized more. And creating these new shows allows us the ability to get him on camera more. And I'm excited about that. I've talked to him. He's excited about that. I was thinking of debuting the Joe Moran show. After Thursday Night Football, the debut, Chiefs versus Lions. But what I just witnessed was too special. Colorado beat TCU 45-42. to I was getting a bit worried in the game. I'm not going to lie. It was becoming a shootout. And if TCU had the ball last, I was worried that Colorado's defense was going to lose the game. But... Colorado's defense stepped up. They got a late stop. And then Colorado ran the clock out. Shador Sanders, 510 yards in his FBS debut. Four passing touchdowns. Completed 80% of his passes. And half of his incompletions were drops by his receivers. Shador Sanders is a legit NFL prospect. He's a legit NFL prospect. And it's a shame that people dismissed his great seasons at JSU because they were at an HBCU. I tweeted it a long time ago. I think Shadur Sanders is going to be a hell of a player, and he's going to be good for Colorado. And I never understood how people just quickly dismissed his 30-touchdown season, six interceptions, when Trey Lance threw 28 touchdowns, to no interceptions in the FCS at North Dakota State. North Dakota State is a powerhouse. They're a powerhouse. They don't face any real competition that's on their level. So for me, I looked at Shador Sanders. I looked at his mechanics, his footwork, his arm strength, his accuracy, and all those things popped off the screen to me. So when I seen that he was going to the FBS, I was happy because he was finally going to get the recognition that he deserved. And in his first game, he set the Colorado school record for passing yards. Colorado hasn't had a 300-plus yard passer since 2019. Shador did that in his first game and added 200-plus yards. Travis Hunter, oh my God, this man, playing wide receiver, 11 receptions. For 119 yards, played defensive back two, had an interception. He played 125 plus snaps in 100 degree weather. Travis Hunter is a stud. It sucks that he's not draft eligible, but he's a stud. And I'm looking at Colorado and what they accomplished today by just beating TCU. They were 0 27 since 2002 when they faced a top 20 team on the road. They beat a top 20 team on the road in TCU. They were the 17th ranked team coming into this game. Colorado all last season only had two players that went over 100 plus receiving yards. In this game, Colorado had four. Travis Hunter, Dylan Edwards, Xavier Weaver, and Jimmy Horn. Colorado's offense is looking legit. I think their offense can compete. The defense is a little bit shaky. But what I really want to talk about is Deion Sanders. 
can you believe that a power five school before he went to J JSU would not give him a head coaching chance? They would not. And this was a slap in the face to all those people that doubted Coach Prom. Something I want to say about Coach Prom, and this might be controversial, this might not be. I understand some people will take it as they may. I never understood why Deion Sanders was called a sellout for leaving Jackson State University. He sparked donations, sponsorship, exposure. Out of his own money, he renovated the Walter Payton Recreation Center at Jackson State University. Out of his own money. Accepting the Colorado job put these athletes in a better position for an NFL future, which ultimately is their dream. Only one player in this past draft was drafted from an HBCU. There is about 20 players currently in the NFL that come from an HBCU. Going to Colorado gave these kids a 10 times better chance at an NFL future. And not to mention, Deion Sanders brought several coaches that were with him at JSU to Colorado. He brought over his wide receivers coach, his tight ends coach, his running backs coach, his assistant coach, his linebackers coach, his cornerbacks coach, his quality controls coach, all which were making way less money at JSU. They now have a better living following prime to Colorado. If anything, Deion Sanders validated his success at Jackson State University and showed that I can come from an HBCU and still hand it to you Power 5 schools. And I feel like that is what he should be remembered for. When he first took the job, the criticism came from every single angle. He won't succeed at the next level. And all I mean, it's just one game, but it was a hell of a game. They called him a sellout for leaving. You shouldn't be a sellout for wanting a better opportunity for yourself. Beating TCU in his first game as a head coach at a Power 5 school was a statement win. He took over a 1-11 program. They already matched their win total from last season in one game, the first game of the season. A lesson is to be learned here. Through all the criticism that comes with making tough decisions, you got to follow your heart and follow your intuition. I know people's counterpoint to me saying I never understood why people call Dion a sellout will be, well, Dion marketed himself as this savior of HBCUs. I mean, one man can only do so much. Why, whenever somebody wants to spark change for something, they have to be the one to completely overhaul it? Deion Sanders played a role. If everybody plays a role, things progress. If you look in, through the history books, every single revolution we've had has not been by one man. Maybe one person gets the most recognition, but it's a lot of people fighting for that change. I think Deion Sanders brought more exposure to HBCUs. He validated having a journey from an HBCU. He gave these young athletes more recognition. These coaches a better chance to rise up in the ranks. That, to me, matters. And Deion Sanders... I'm happy for him. I'm happy he made such a statement. I'm happy Shador Sanders had the debut he had. He became an unknown draft prospect to now, oh man, Shador, if he plays like this, could be a first round pick, could be a top 10 pick. Shador is good, man. There's a reason why Tom Brady said that he's going to be something. There's a reason why. 
Travis Hunter, he's a stud. And all Dylan Edwards, true freshman, where he did four touchdowns, 150-plus scrimmage yards. Colorado got something. And I trust Prime. I trust the direction of this team. And, man, I'm excited for the college football season. This is the first time that I'm going to be locked into college football in my entire life. And what a way to start it. Oh, man, I'm excited. Now, if y'all don't mind, I'm going to go back. I'm going to get ready. I'm gonna, and if y'all don't mind, I'm going to go back to the couch. I'm going to get ready for USC because Caleb Williams is coming on. We got North Carolina versus South Carolina. I want to see Drake May play the quarterbacks. Oh, my goodness. But, yeah, the Joel Moran show, Mondays, Thursdays, after the primetime games. And I'm going to have another episode a week with John Tortorelli. I'm excited about that. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.